hello students hope you all are boot camping in your own house as i am because of coronavirus today i have come with a ppt of linear programming problem because many of you are having difficulties in plotting the equations on the graph as well as finding the feasible regions or the points so i will be talking about the same with the help of an example so that you will be able to understand the steps for solving the lpp but before that let's have a quick revision on lpp basically lpp is a method to develop a mathematical model of a case study uh, it is basically used to convert any case study to a set of equation which we call it as a mathematical model now what we will uh, what is the use of that equation the main use is to optimize the given mathematical model or the given case study when i will find out the solution of that mathematical model or my mathematical equation so how i will able to find out or how, how i will able to optimize my solution by using graphical method so what are the steps of that graphical method so the basic steps are i need to identify or i need to develop the objective function then i need to make the constraint function then which means on the basis of what limitation i will be able to achieve my objective function now by using that constraint function i will be plotting those constraint function on a graph and then i will find out the feasible point or the feasible region now by using this feasible point i will substitute this in my objective function to find the optimal solution and after that i will get my basic uh, answer that at which point that how i am optimizing at what point i am optimizing and how much i am optimizing my given case study or the word problem so let's quickly go to the question now the firm makes two types of furniture chairs and tables the contribution of each product is calculated by accounting department which is rupees 20 per chair and 30 per chair both the products are processed on three machines m1 m2 and m3 now this table is shown in which uh, they have mentioned that how much hours uh, is required for each product to manufacture and what is the total time available in hour per week for each machine and i need to find the maximum contribution made by the three machines in the production of the furniture so as i have already mentioned that in this question i need to maximize my given word problem so in my uh, this given word problem i need to maximize now what i need to maximize i need to maximize my contribution of uh, made by the three machines m1 m2 and m3 for producing the furniture so first is i need to decide what will be my decision variable see any company is manufacturing some commodities or some objects so those object will be simply considered as my uh, decision variable so the number of that object will be considered as my decision variable variable so therefore let the number of chairs be is equal to x and number of table is equal to y now in this case because the firm is producing only two furniture so that's why i am having only two decision variable if there would have been other um, uh, let's say showcase or uh, any cupboard so that would have been my third variable z so and i have uh, i have written that my total available time is 36 for m1 50 for m2 and 60 for m3 now these are the maximum time available to manufacture the chair as well as table x number of chair and y number of table by using machine m1 so from this table we can find three different constraint equation yes three different constraint equation how let's see we have uh, we have the information that one chair requires 3 hours by m1 and one table requires 3 hours by m2 but this total available time i am having for m1 is only 36 hours means up to 36 hours only i can use m1 in a week after that i will not be allowed to use that similarly for m2 i am having only 50 hours so this is 
this all available time are considered as my maximum time which has been allotted for me to use this machines so because this this are the maximum time so therefore it will be considered as the constraint equation will be considered as 3x plus 3y will be less than or equal to 36 for m1 5x plus 2y less than or equal to 50 for m2 and 2x plus 6y less than or equal to 60 for m3 okay so because this less than or equal to why this is less than or equal to is coming because 36 is the maximum time available for m1 to use m2 for 50 only 50 hours are available for m2 and 60 hours are available for m3 and i can see this two uh, different constraint equations i am having this constraint equations are considered as non-negative constraint equation why because these are very important because number of chairs is equal to x and number of y is e number of tables is equal to y so x x is a number of chairs so i cannot have minus one number of chair or i cannot have minus two number of table table i will always have a positive a positive integer even i cannot have 1.2 number of table or i cannot have 1.2 number of chair so in that case i will always have an x and y will always be a positive as well as it should be an integer uh, please note that x and y are positive non negative integer please note that and uh, we'll see why we are uh, why we are saying like this that it will be an integer it will be uh, it will be reflected the information will be reflected in in my conclusion only okay now <coughs> sorry basically what we are doing is we will be finding out the we will be plotting this constraint equation in my graph so to find out what are the regions so i need to convert i need uh, for those who are not able to understand that in which region my uh, equation or my line will be, uh, will have or uh, what will be the region in which i should uh, i should shed which whether it is away from origin or whether it will be towards origin so for them i have used this arrow type of notation what they should do is consider this equality equal inequality term less than or greater than as the arrowhead as the arrowhead of their equation like this less than is pointing towards my x and y terms so similarly my arrowhead is coming to is pointing towards x and y terms similarly x is greater than or equal to zero this equality this inequality greater than sign is pointing towards is pointing towards zero so therefore the arrowhead is also pointing towards zero so try to convert this equation this constraint equation in this format so it will be very easier for you to plot the plot your graph why because on the basis of this i will be giving you the two golden rules what are those golden rules the golden rules are if the arrow points towards x y or the variable terms means this x y 5 x plus 2 y 2 x plus 6 y x y then the region will be towards the origin okay the region will be towards the origin and if the arrow points towards the constant term constant term means 36 50 60 0 0 now if my arrow is pointing towards this constant term then the region will be away from the origin the region will be away from the origin so from this uh, golden rule we can say that which equation will plot will have region in which direction so because now like this uh, like in this equation we will have this arrow is pointing towards x y term so therefore this equation will uh, will shade towards origin the region will lie towards the origin and in this x the x is tending to zero or the arrow is arrow heading is towards arrow heading is towards zero or the constant term so in this case my region will be away from origin okay so similarly if we plot each and every each and every line i will have such type of regions this is for 3x plus 2y 36 
I am having towards origin 5x plus 2y uh, greater uh, less than equal to 50. I will have towards uh, towards the origin then uh, 5x plus 2y uh, or y y is tending to zero or y is equal to zero. I am having the value away from the origin x is equal to zero away from the origin. Now here you should know that y is equal to zero is is actually your x-axis and x is equal to zero is actually your y-axis. Okay, so always remember y is equal to zero is your x-axis, x is equal to zero is your y-axis. Similarly, my last equation or my last constraint will be will be plotted like this, and because it is less than equal to sixty, so therefore it will again have towards the origin. Okay, for your reference, I have. Uh, mention the equations in this in this way also so that you can have a pretty clear understanding so now if I combine all the three equations or all the three graphs or all the three plots so I, uh, the my complete plot will look like this okay so after having this plot I will be plotting I will be using my uh, feasible region by uh, by finding the common region by plotting all these equations i will have one common region so i am getting this common region and on the basis of this common region i will be plotting the corner points okay so these are my corner point o a b c d okay so how i will find out o a b c d o is always origin so i will have 0 comma 0 a will be a is 0 comma 10 because it is lying on y-axis and you can also uh, substitute this equation in uh, substitute the value of y is equal to 0 in a 2x plus 6y is equal to 60 you will always get as uh, y is equal to 10 when you will substitute x is equal to 0 and uh, how you will find out the value of b as well as c you will find out the b when you will solve 2x plus 6y is equal to 60 and 3x plus 3y is equal to 36 because this b point is formed when you are intersecting these two lines similarly you will find c when you uh, when you will solve 5x plus 2y is equal to 50 and 3x plus 3y is equal to 36 because you are intersect because the c point is defined by intersection of these two points so you are getting these two lines and, and these two points B and C and similarly for D you will again substitute the value of value of Y as 0 to find in 5x plus 2Y is equal to 50 to get the value of X and you will get as 10 comma 0. Now I have got all these corner point. Now my last method will be to find out my optimal solution. But optimal solution can be found out by, from the objective function only so what will be my objective function no problem i have the information as cost of one chair is 20 and cost of one table is 30 it has been decided by the accounting department only in uh, which has been clearly mentioned in my in my program uh, in my question itself it is given as rupees 20 per chair and 30 per table it has already been mentioned so no need to worry and similarly so therefore you will uh, get the total cost of the to of all the furniture will become as 20 x plus 30 times y now you need to substitute the value of x and y simultaneously to get uh, to get the value so in this table it is showing all those values so here you can see it is given as 6.923 and 7.923 i have approximated to 6 and 7 because 6 is the whole number and 0.923 is very is is approximately equal to 1 but it is not actual 1 so therefore in this case i will always consider the floor value so that that's why i have considered 6.923 as uh, the floor value as 6 and 7.923 floor value as 7 so similarly i have find out the value of value as 330 now from this values what will be my uh, maximum value it will be this the marked with red so that's why my final answer will be the number of chairs will be 6 
and the number of table will be 7 and the total amount of contribution will be 